in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to our service on this 13th Sunday after Trinity. Hope you've had a good week and you're keeping safe and well. Just to bring you up to speed on next door, uh, their garden is now finished. Yay! And they've started the extension. So there are still some noises, I'm afraid. There are all sorts of noises going on this morning. It's a hive of activity and I do hope that it's not too distracting for you this morning. Hopefully you've got your service sheet in front of you. If you haven't, then do download one from the link below. Everything in bold print we will say together. And as always, when we come to that time of communion, I will be receiving Holy Communion on your behalf. If you'd like to say the prayer that's in your service sheet, then please do. Or, of course, alternatively, you can say your own prayer. If you'd like to light a candle, joining in with us in that light of Christ, please do. That light that links us all this morning in worship. So this morning we will be thinking a little bit about what it means to be church, what it's meant to be church for us during this time um, across the, the miles and also what it means as we now begin to gather together in a physical way in our churches and our church buildings. So we're going to have a think about that. But before we do that, let's just take a moment to be still, be present, be aware that God is wherever we are, that our church is wherever we are, our building, wherever we are, God draws near. Let's turn to our service sheet and we say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So as we come before God, we acknowledge those times that we've fallen short. Those times when we haven't loved God with all our heart, we haven't loved our neighbours as ourselves. And we lay that all before God, knowing that we are forgiven. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray the second prayer together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we celebrate with the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, 
have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So the Collect for the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty God, you who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Over the period of lockdown, we've had to be creative about how we gather as a congregation. We've, of course, been gathering in a different sort of way. These online services have become our new way of doing church at this time. Many of you have told me that the familiarity of the online services has been a real comfort to you during this time. The fact that the words and patterns of the service are familiar the Bible readings, the prayers, even the familiar face of the priest. And we are blessed with all this technology that we can do this. Imagine if this had happened 10 years or so ago, I think it would have been a very different picture. And of course, we chose to make our online services a Eucharist service. I've been receiving Holy Communion on behalf of all of you, which is a privilege and I'll be honest, also feels a huge responsibility. Also through your feedback, I've heard that you've been fully entering into the worship online. It hasn't been a case of simply tuning in to At Home with Karen. It's that you've been able to come close to God through this shared act of worship and through the Holy Sacrament being received on your behalf. I've learnt a lot about God during this time and I hope you have too. One of the most significant things I've learnt is that God is much bigger than all of this, all of this that's going on at the moment, and that God can cross the boundaries of time and space to reach each of us wherever we are. And I hope that's your experience too. I hope that you've been feeling God's presence with you through these times of worship and through your own prayer time with God as well. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. You may be watching at home on your own, and the two that that refers to is you and I, or you may be gathered with loved ones, your partner, wife, husband, children, the cat. God promises to come close to us however many of us there are, even if it's just two or three. Things are now slowly beginning to change and we are now permitted to gather again in our church buildings, hooray! 
we can gather together physically rather than through the wonders of YouTube. Holy Communion can now be taken in person once again. I can now place the bread in outstretched hands as each person receives that gift for themselves once again. We can see our church families again, catching up on all that we've missed. And we can share in worship and prayer with others in person, all together at the same time and in the same place. Our online services have been helpful to us. To be, but to be church is different when we all come together in one physical space. To be church is a bit like what it means to be family. A group of people, all different, thrown together. Some of those people we will find a real connection with, and some of those people it will be quite hard to love them. Some of them we will speak with at great length, others we may find communication difficult. Some will be members who we've known for a long time, maybe all our lives, and some will be new to our number, perhaps changing the shape and nature of our church family. Being church, like being family, is real. It's messy. It may involve misunderstandings, it may involve arguments, it may involve tears, but that's what families are like. Unlike an online service where I can decide to start again or redo a bit that isn't quite right, being church doesn't have that facility. It is real, it is raw, it is live. Today's gospel reading addresses this realness of that gathered community. It talks about what it's like to be church, a gathered people, and it doesn't dress it up. But it gives some advice which is ultimately it requires everyone to work at it. As within our own relationships and families, it requires something from us, a commitment and a dedication, and above all, good communication. And that's what, what is being said in our gospel reading this morning. When you have an issue with another member, go to that member and work it out. Don't let it fester. Talk about it and find a way through it. You may not always agree, but as in any relationship, you find a way through the tough stuff. Each person must listen, really listen to the other and be listened to. There may be an element of forgiveness required and then a line drawn under it all. A commitment then made to move forward as members of the same family, the body of Christ where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. As we now gather back together in our church buildings, we enter back into a family of people. And although I've painted a picture of chaos and arguments, there is of course something very special about that family. In that family of the church, we find support and encouragement, common ground, a shared interest, people who get it, love and laughter, warmth and welcome, a place of belonging. So these online services have been a way of keeping us together while we've been scattered, but our return to our churches means that we can once again encounter the fullness of being part of a gathered community, a family, which sadly no YouTube channel can provide. A family of people who we journey with through all that life brings with that common goal, to know God better, to know ourselves as beloved children of God and to be part of God's family. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. A friend recently posted this on good old Facebook. Apologies, I can't remember who you are, so thank you for whoever you are. Um, I'm gonna read it to you now. The church should be at the center of our community. We must fling open the doors and be relevant. Be not afraid to change, adapt, mold. The church should be a messy place, full of activity, people meeting, children playing and rolling on the floor, adults working. A place for noise, mess, calm, retreat. A place to chill out and reflect, to gain energy and be inspired. 
a place where you are welcome, not an exclusive club, where if your name or face doesn't fit, you're not coming in. We must look outside ourselves and see what's needed, what's required, what's longed for. A space for people to work in with Wi-Fi and good coffee on tap, a space for people to reflect and be quiet, a place to meet and share, a place of choice, a place of pilgrimage, a place of hope, a place of love. How do we make sure we are always there? How can we be what's needed at this time and the next time and the time after that? A real welcome says, come in and make yourself at home. It says, come here rather than somewhere else. It says, choose us, not because we want you to be in our congregation, but because that's what we are about, being there for you and me and anyone and everyone. In that way, we can truly be God's love on earth. There is no greater gift, no greater love, no greater service, no greater offering than ourselves. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Amen. We declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, you are among us, even when we are few in number, gathered in your name. Even when we are at home, when we are at church. Strengthen and bless all who meet to celebrate your sacraments and feed on your word. We bless those who have been taking part in these home services. And we bless those who are back in the church buildings once again. Help us to be a church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are among us in disputes and disagreements. Open our hearts to your reconciling grace. Help us to meet each other where we are. Help us to forgive one another. Help us to show that love that you have for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are among us in sickness and health. Teach us to see through our frailty to your loving mercy that always holds us. We pray for all those who are suffering in mind, body or spirit at this time. We pray for those struggling through this time of COVID-19. We pray for all those who care for those who are unwell. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are among us when tears flow and day turns to night. Gather to yourself all who have died, praying for those who have died recently, for those who are coming to the end of their life, and for those whom we love yet see no longer. Bring us to the joy of the dawning new day of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quiet, we lift before God perhaps a difficult relationship that we want to hand to God. Those people that we find difficult to love, those people who have hurt us in some way. And we offer that all to God. Lord, give us help to cope with difficult relationships. Help us to love those who are difficult to love. As we gather together as family, help us to work on those relationships. Lead us and guide us and give us your peace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Love one another. As I have loved you, so you are to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we come to this time of Holy Communion and as I said at the beginning, if you'd like to say the prayer that's in your service sheet when it comes to receiving Holy Communion and ask for a spiritual communion, then you're very welcome to do so or to use your own prayer. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, he put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St Edmund, St Alban and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. the body and blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we, who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We, who drink his cup, bring life to others. We, whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you for joining us this morning in this worship. As always, go to our Facebook pages and websites for, for more information. Coming up this week, um, quiet prayer and reflection. If you'd like to come into church for a time of quiet prayer and reflection, you're very welcome to do so. That will be at St Edmund's on Thursday, 
there is a change. I did, I was a bit, bit previous last week, wasn't I? It's this week. St Edmunds is now on Thursday morning, um, 9.30 till 10.30. There is a service, um, a small, very simple Holy Communion service with quiet prayer and reflection after that. So you can come to the service, you can come for prayer and reflection, you can come for both. Um, this week, there won't be any quiet prayer and reflection at St Albans. That will be back to normal the following week. Um, the reason being is that Mandy's lines, licensing, even, is going to be happening. Um, it's going to be happening on Zoom and it's a limited guest list, unfortunately. But just to say that we will be having a joint celebration, um, her and I, um, at some point where we can all be part of that. If you'd like to come to church on Sunday, then we are up and running. So St Edmunds and St Albans, 10.30 a.m. And one last thing, as our churches are now opening and we're doing more within our church buildings, it's a time to think about what we do about our online services. The other thing happening is clearly I'm going to be taking up my part time post having a little bit less time. So as you can imagine, this all takes up quite a lot of preparation time. And so we've been talking about what we do about our online services. We know that it's really important to a lot of you. And so we're not stopping them, um, but they are going to change in format slightly. So the service, as you know it, this kind of service, Holy Communion service, there will be one more next week. Um, and then after that, we are going to get creative. So definitely tune in because it's going to be fun. Um, there will be a space, there'll be a gap the following week where um, we're going to take a holiday before we start our new jobs. And so um, just to say next week will be exactly like this, this sort of service. And then after that, there'll be a space and then there will be um, some new input. If you have some ideas for that, having watched for all these weeks, then please do get in touch because we really value your feedback. I've had lots of really good feedback from people which has helped us. And so if you're sitting at home thinking, oh, it would be really good if, I don't know, whatever, then do get in touch. Um, you can do that through the website or through Facebook. So do tune in next week for our grand finale of these services. Um, and until then, have a great week. Do stay safe and we'll ask for God's blessing as we go on our way. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.